Hey cat, it's Valentine's Day. Do you know what that means? <laughs> That's right, the Sonic movie came out. How exciting, a new movie, but also a new Sonic logo. I just couldn't help but think of the universal truth of Sonic. The material may suck, but the logos will always be great. Except the mad lads at Paramount did the unthinkable, the cardinal sin of Sonic logos. Do you see it? You never do this. Only Pac-Man can get away with this. This just looks like you got teeth. Honestly, I'm surprised they never tried this before. This found typography is a very tempting thing to do for beginning graphic designers, myself included. But Sonic never touched this. However, he's done something worse. So you know those like dermatology product commercials where they like zoom in on the skin to show the exfoliation of pores or whatever. Why do they do that for the Sonic Adventure logo? Ah, back onto the topic of fonts, colors, kerning, perspective, and structure. Truly, nothing is more useless in our modern time. Seriously, did monkeys design this? The thing with logos is people don't really know about graphic design. They don't quite know what the difference is between something that's good or bad. The reality is we like what we're comfortable with. So when stuff changes and we don't like it, it usually just comes down to, I can't drink a Pepsi when it's tilted a little. And while you could redesign a logo again and again to get it perfect, I mean, the core of the idea is most logos are okay. They're serviceable. That is to say, if they distract you by standing out, then they're probably not doing their job right. But that doesn't mean it has to be dull. It just means it has to match and fit the values of the media it's representing. Super Mario Sunshine would be jarring if it looked like this. Conversely, God of War, it would look like a parody if it wasn't a serif. So to me, a bad logo is A, something that doesn't fit what it's supposed to represent, B, something that lacks a distinct identity, and then C, stuff that just does not think about what it's doing. So I really went and searched for bad logos, but the reality is some of the worst offenders are often the most dull and uninspired. They just copy what everyone else is doing. You guys need to take notes from Ball 3D. So I am trying to look for some of the worst logos. It's just in my findings, a lot of them, rather than being outwardly crazy bad, are just average, basic, and boring. So let's get into some gaming logos that just do not do their job right. And the easiest place to look is Mario. You scumbag. When you think of Mario, you think bright, whimsical, wonder, not chrome. I know you were expecting this. I mention it like every other Thursday, but I look at this Mario Kart DS logo and I feel 30 years older every time. It does not represent Mario at all. It looks like the finishing on cars when they put the emblems on and I get it. Just it doesn't work here. At least they kind of fixed it with deluxe. On the inverse, no, I don't care how many useless characters you tack onto the end of this logo or in the games you still look like you sell tires. New Soup attempted to capture the original style of the Soup logo, but this one had as much identity as the original game. So you update it with the pipe look, but then you have this 3D pre-rendered Mario and I think I'm gonna yak. As for some of the worst Mario logos, Mario's Tennis. This just looks like someone made it last second on Monday morning. The spacing on the letters, the size of the letters, it's, it's just not put together well. Oh god, the logo's infected! Oh, it's just a basketball texture. This one just has too much going on. Like, each of the letters are sized differently and tilted in different ways, and there's just too many colors. This is like when Eminem went back to the Slim Shady look after recovery. Uh... But now, let's get into the second largest franchise in Smash. emblem looks like it actually sells now. Great job, you guys. But it's classy, you know? Don't fix something if it ain't broken. It's royal, it's a serif, it's uh, got good spacing on the letters. This is what it's always been, right? The 2000s logo looked like a game about pinball. I'm blamed for real. And Path of Radiance really wanted you to know about that fire. I'm building up a house where they raised me. Man, I hope Metroid gets the Fire Emblem treatment, and not only with the logos, but with the whole having games release. Super Metroid looks radical and straight out of the 90s. But then, progressively, the Metroid logos got lazier, more boring, and then this. Who the fuck? The same thing happened to F-Zero. They had a cool idea, and then they made it chrome. I guess these games' logos kind of lack an identity because their series have sort of been in a limbo. But I think going through this is good for them. Hey, ever wonder if the X at the end of your name is actually a tail? Speaking of Xs, uh, this just looks like somewhere you get your oil changed. 
The axe just looks like they upped the text size and left it without any other edits. It's so blasé and it doesn't match the fantasy aspects of Xenoblade. Also get an extinguisher. It's on fire! But if we're looking for the worst logos around Nintendo consoles, Conker's Bad Fur Day. I actually think it fits the game very well, but like the name of the character and the first word of the title is much smaller. You'd think this game's called Bad Fur Day. Watashi wa ima. Anime game nisui. Hanashimas. God, that was probably horrible. <laughs> Anime game logos. They try to do it all. Sonic 3, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Knuckles. <laughs> it's nothing like the manga. When it comes to making a logo, you gotta ask yourself, what is my game about? Boobs! <sighs> At least it's honest. Now it'd be incredibly easy to pick on these Japanese logos with the long subtitles and letters that are hard to read. So... <laughs> But yeah, you're gonna read those guys and try and read them as best as you can. Okay. Uh, Dragon Quest. Uh, Echoes of an Elusive Ages. Definitive Edition. Kingdom Hearts HD 2 8 Final Chapter Prologue. Disney Square Enix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cress, Cross, Blade, Blast, Dag, Blast, Dag, Blue, Bale? <laughs> Battle, battle, blue battle, black. What? No, Guilty this. Gear, R D X E Rex Two R E X R R. Wait, it's like the maybe it's the. These logos aesthetically, however, are pretty. Never has a game filled out the entire search bar for just its logo. In the very least, I like Dragon Quest's logo, and I can read this. Well, it's a new generation. Indie game titles exist now, and they'll make straightforward titles for their game. Oh my god, what? So, uh, anyone want to take a guess at what that's supposed to say? Uh, so it's actually Y2K, but I'll take Yik. I have a place in my heart for this stuff. It's that sort of curse that's too ugly to be taken seriously, but not ugly enough to not be an aesthetic. Anyways, we've talked about anime games, but we haven't talked about anime games. They just love throwing words and numbers wherever they can! This is a common trend with games that serve as merchandise. They have the basic logo of the series that then contrasts with the subtitle of the box art and then a number. It's... it's a mess. Speaking of, a Dragon Ball game isn't complete if it doesn't look like they just slapped a bunch of character renders on the front, then weaseled the classic logo and a couple of other words there to make it a game cover. When the logos get this tall, it's like you have to be a certain height to play. Of course, how can I neglect this abomination of a logo? How can the same letters that have basically been in every Dragon Ball logo cause problems in this one? Dragon Ball smashed together and then squeezed at the end. Then there's the space between fighters just for no reason. And the Z! Giant Z! The Z is just unbelievably large. It doesn't look like it's part of the word fighters. Oh, but we gotta squeeze the one star Dragon Ball in there. Just between the two words, just get it in there. <laughs> Which reminds me of pets. How the fuck? So a thought, if good games with huge budgets and a lot of time can produce bad logos, what about the worst games? Ah, the delightful garbage releases of Ubisoft games. This is usually your culprit for half of a console's library that you've never heard of. I mean, you could live your whole life not knowing these existed and still be fine. Will Rock. <laughs> Will he? These logos look like they were made in three minutes. Speaking of forgettable entries to a console's library, here's a look. War shooters, gray, blocky, hard outline. A smaller middle word. Seriously, you mix and match these logos with different games, I wouldn't be able to tell. Saying these are the worst is a bit of a stretch, but a lot are painfully unoriginal. I prefer the tacky ones to this. At least I remember those. It's like the movies. You can see a bunch of passable ones, you forget them. But when you see a horrible movie, that stays with you. You can only see Twilight for the first time once. Uh, you know what? We're on a roll here. Same thing happens with horror games. White contrasted logo. Check. Worn down texture. Check! Sharp lettering! Check! The color red! Ding 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 ding! We have a winner! I wish horror games just did anything else. <laughs> Never mind. Do I need to say anything? The logo describes itself. It's such a short word, how did you make it that confusing? This goes beyond game logos, like company logos for gaming companies have also shrunk down and become less... Um... Everything. They've become less everything. Rare? Hurts my heart. Oh, Insomniac finally got some sleep! Meanwhile at PlayStation... Piss. 
But shit, it was 599 US dollars. Sony's not even that bad. At least Microsoft has always remained lame. It's actually amazing. This is the first time I saw their extended list of logos. And it went from having so much personality and flair to absolutely none. No! I usually rip on insignificant things in jest. It's another thing to say that I can do better. So... Wow, you really thought you were slick with this, didn't you? I don't even remember the name of this font, but I sort of like how it has that homegrown look to it because my channel had no quality back then. And the glasses. I don't know why you Google searched a basic pair of Ray-Bans and then selected all of it, cleared it, and then just colored it purple. Wow, you're a graphic designer. All right, let's move to the next one, and that's when we get into Futura. Whew, did you take one graphic design class? Okay, here we go. This, this one's actually good, but it's probably because I played Persona once, and then I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. Well, now that I have this, I don't think I could possibly update. <laughs> Very funny. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. No, no, no. Oh, thank you for watching to the end of this video and thank you to everybody in the Discord and the Patreon Discord for uh, making these images, these nice logos. A lot of you went above and beyond. I was not expecting. I was really expecting most of the junk, but thank you everybody. Uh, if you didn't know, we have a Discord. The mods are great, run fantastically. If you love events or you just like the channel, go check it out, it might be for you. Thank you everybody for watching to the end, of course. Uh, thank you to the patrons, as you see coming down the screen. You support making these videos possible uh, and letting me go to the extent of talking about logos. This was obviously on the lighter side, but I have fun topics uh, that I'm going to be doing next and I'm very excited for them. So take it easy, everybody, and I will see you on the flip side.